Hello and welcome to my next video on entropy and free energy. Entropy, S, is the measure of the degree of disorder in a system. Delta S means entropy change. The unit of entropy is the, is the joule per kelvin minus one per mole minus one. Or joule per, kel joule per kelvin mole. Now if the sign of delta S is plus, that means there's an increase. If the sign is minus, means there's a decrease in entropy. So what does entropy mean? Now, entropy is like kind of shows a degree of disorder because particles are always in constant motion. Now, if you think of some balls in a box, you have a you have a you have a number of balls. Let's say you know um, ten balls in a box. You're not going to find them in like a perfect triangle shape standing up. That's quite ordered, a nice perfect triangle. You're more likely to find them in a complete random mess. That is what entropy is. It is the measure of disorder. And disorder is always favoured. So if entropy increases, there is more randomness. So if you had 10 joules per kelvin per mole, and it increased to 20, that means the system's getting more random. Equally, if it decreases, it's becoming less random. Right, so I said disorder is always favoured. Now this means, particularly when you're looking at states of matter, gas is favoured. If you have a solid cube in a big box, there's only one way that cube can be arranged, is in that little cube. It can be in different places in the box, but it's still that cube. Liquid, that's more arrangements because it might fill up half the box with water, let's say, and then the particles in that half the box can be anywhere. Gas is even more favoured because it can be anywhere in the box at all, much more random. So solid to liquid to gas, entropy increases as solid turns to liquid as it turns to gas. Now you also look at the number of moles. So that's the two things to look for whenever ask is entropy increasing or decreasing. Has the state changed? Solid to liquid to gas. Also solid to aqueous to gas as well is the way it goes. But also, if you have just gases, let's say, does it increase or decrease? Now here, you have N2 gas plus 3H2 gas becomes 2NH3 gas. So they're all gases. But is the entropy increasing or decreasing? Well, on the left-hand side, there are four moles of gas. On the right-hand side, there are two. Now, in a container, if you have four moles of gas, there are more ways those four moles can be arranged as opposed to having just two. So that means if you have more moles of gas going to less moles of gas, the entropy de decreases as it's becoming more ordered. Now, delta S equals the sum of the entropy of the products minus the sum of the entropy of the reactants. So the best way to do it is an example. Same equation, N2 has an entropy of 192, H2 has an entropy of 131, NH3 has an entropy of 193. Delta S therefore equals, now the NH3 is the product, so 193 times 2, because there are two moles of NH3, minus 192, the entropy of N2, one mole of that, plus 131, the entropy of hydrogen times by 3, because there are three moles of a hydrogen. Overall, there is minus 199 joules per kelvin per mole. That's the entropy. Now that's negative, so it's becoming more ordered, and we said it would become more ordered because there's less gas being formed. Free energy change. The free energy change, which is measured as delta G, is the balance between enthalpy, entropy, and temperature for a process. The equation delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, where delta G is for energy change, delta H is enthalpy, T is temperature, and delta S is entropy. Now the units here must be consistent. Now the best way to look at it is I do is look at the entropy, which is joules per kelvin per mole. Now enthalpy is kilojoules per mole. So you have one measured in kilojoules, one measured in joules. You can do two things. You can either times the enthalpy by a thousand to get it in joules, or divide the entropy by a thousand to get it in kilojoules. I always times the enthalpy by a thousand. That's the way I prefer to do it. 
I also, if you look at temperature, temperature is normally measured in degrees Celsius. Entropy is measured in joules per Kelvin. So you need to make sure you convert temperature to Kelvin. And you do this by adding 273 to the temperature. So you have zero degrees Celsius, it's 273 Kelvin. You also have absolute zero. This is zero degrees Kelvin. And this is when temperature in Celsius equals minus 273 degrees Celsius. So make sure those units are all consistent. There is an example on the next page. So feasibility of a reaction. When delta G equals zero or is less than zero, so negative, the reaction is feasible. So a reaction is first feasible when delta G equals zero. So this means you can rearrange the equation. Now I've just shown the rearranged form, but in case you want to know how you rearrange it, delta G equals zero. So you've got delta H minus delta T, sorry, delta H minus T delta S equals zero. Move the T delta S over, so you've got T delta S equals delta H, which then you divide by delta S to get T equals delta H over delta S. T is the temperature when the reaction is feasible. So here's an example. Ethanol plus three oxygen becomes two carbon dioxide plus three H2O. So the combustion of ethanol. The delta H for this reaction is minus 786 kilojoules per mole minus one. Delta S equals 68 joules per Kelvin mole minus one. The temperature is 25 degrees. Now they generally give you 25 degrees Celsius because that is standard conditions, which is also known as 298 Kelvin. So first you convert delta H into joules times by 1000, so you've got minus 786,000 minus 298 times 68. This gives you minus 806,264 joules per mole minus 1, which equals minus 806.26 kilojoules per mole minus 1. Now this isn't a very good example for the feasibility question, but it works. When delta G equals 0, T equals minus 786,000 over 68. Now this ends up giving feasibility of minus. The temperature here would be minus, which you can't have. You only have zero as the lowest. So basically says this reaction is feasible at any temperature. If you let's, for example, got um, a t the delta H was some random numbers, 1000 plus 1000 and delta S was plus 50, you would get a f temperature where the reaction is feasible of 20 Kelvin. So that's how that works. Now you'll see why this was a relatively bad example for showing um, feasibility in the next section. Right. When delta H is negative and delta S is positive, the reaction is always feasible. That's because you end up having a negative divided by a positive which will come out a negative. So basically any temperature makes the reaction feasible. If delta H is positive and delta S is negative, the reaction is never feasible. That's because if you think of delta G equals delta H, which is a positive, minus delta ST. Now, T is always positive. Delta S here is always negative. So a negative times a positive is a negative. Then you have positive delta H minus negative delta S, which means you're adding them together. So there's no way it can be a negative value. Delta G must be negative for the reaction to be feasible. Delta, when delta H equals negative and delta S equals negative, the reaction is only feasible at low temperatures for the same reason. If you're taking away delta TS, which is a negative value, you're adding it. So if delta H equals minus 100, delta ST equals, uh, equals minus 99, you overall get minus 1. That is feasible. So that's why it's only feasible at low temperatures. As temperatures increase, the T delta S complex increases and becomes more negative. So you're taking away a larger negative number. So you're adding a larger number. So it's more likely to be positive. Equally, if delta H is positive and delta S is positive, it is only feasible at high temperatures. And that's because you're taking, so if you have delta H equals 200, delta S equals 10, to make sure it's negative, you have to have a very large temperature. In this case, actually in this case, not very large, about 20, but uh, still you generally have high temperatures to make sure it is um, a negative delta G. So in conclusion, delta S 
equal the entropy change equals the sum of the products of the entropy of the products minus the sum of the entropy of reactants delta g equals enthalpy minus temperature times entropy and temperature equals enthalpy over entropy when delta g equals zero so thank you for watching as usual ask any questions if you need to contact me like subscribe the usual so thanks for watching bye